It's Mary Ugolini here with Rebel News. And last week, I attended an event at the Eglinton Grand Centre in Toronto, Ontario. It was organized by Bright Light News. Called the War on Medicine, Cells Don't Lie, the panel discussion brought three COVID-contrary American doctors to Canadian soil for the very first time. Doctors Pierre Corey, Kat Lindley, and Ryan Cole. Critical care physician and lung specialist Dr. Corey in part founded the Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Alliance, also known as the FLCCC. He dedicated his life's work thereafter to advocacy work on saving patient lives with early treatment options and repurposed drugs. Here's the thing. After my testimony, not that I expected a ticker tape parade, but like I literally thought like things were going to be different. Like countries around the world would start looking at the evidence for ivermectin, would start to be deployed in prevention and treatment worldwide. And this whole show of a pandemic would have a different trajectory and arc. And what happened is that's not what happened. Oh, really? Okay. Can I tape it to my chin? Um, so it was just very weird because like within two days of my testimony, the Associated Press asked for an interview. And we were like so excited in the FLCCC, you know, this reporter from the Associated Press wanted to talk to me in my testimony. I talked her ear off for like 20 minutes, giving her all the data, all the epidemiologic analyses, all the health ministries that were kicking ass around the world with this. And then two days later, the article came out. What do you think it said? It was big headline, ivermectin is not a miracle drug for COVID. And then the article actually didn't really talk about ivermectin. It literally introduced ivermectin as the latest drug to debunk, and then it went into hydroxychloroquine. Yeah. Why was it important to come here tonight? Just hearing from the amazing doctors, I guess, and really getting a perspective of what it's like to be on the front lines in medicine and how courageous they are to stand up. And um, there's very few of them. and. It's helped me to have a lot of respect for the people in the medical community, basically, you know. Family doctor Lindley spoke in depth about the World Health Organization and their legislated power grab attempts by way of a new pandemic accord or pandemic treaty and how they are trying to amend existing international health regulations that legally bind member states like Canada and the United States to the whims of the WHO and threaten their individual country's health sovereignty. Dr. Cole is one of the few pathologists worldwide speaking out about the dangers of the spike protein, which he is finding spread throughout various tissues all across the human body, primarily in COVID-19 vaccinated deceased patients. So this is another problem. These are all problems. This was in a congressional hearing in March or April of 2020 when they were talking about Operation Warped Greed. They knew about this. They knew about this. They said, this could be a problem. And they went ahead anyway and used the wrong part of the virus for the shots. Autoimmune disease, it's your body attacking and eating itself. Plenty of, plenty of cases in the literature on that. Here we go, adrenal glands. So your adrenal glands are responsible for so much function in your, in your body. It's your fight or flight response. It's your adrenaline. It's your, it regulates blood sugar, regulates your potassium. Anybody hear about POT syndrome, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome? Big problem after the shots. Here's why. That spike protein in the adrenals, that spike protein, all that brown in the adrenal glands. All of a sudden your adrenals aren't functioning normally. I'll answer one of the Q and A's now. Um, SIADH, yes, why adrenals? The spike protein is going to the adrenal glands. In everybody, no. And this is the thing, is we didn't, we didn't do all these studies before we rolled it out onto humanity. The mice wouldn't volunteer to do it. They knew it was too dangerous. Here's another patient, not only in the adrenal cortex, but in, in the adrenal medulla, spike protein. The cells don't lie. Uh-oh, what about reproductive harms? Safe and effective. Don't worry about it, right? Oh, here's a placenta. See all that brown? What is that? Spike protein. Oh, goodness. Here's the endometrium, the lining of the uterus. What's all that brown? 
Pop, these aren't the droids you're looking for. Don't worry about it. Spike protein. How di much differently would the handling of COVID been had we have not seen this mass censorship and slandering of doctors like the ones we heard from tonight? Yeah, you know, without political debate on it, we we can't we can't move forward, and it just would have happened a lot quicker. Like the one doctor said, that it would just this would have been over in like 24 hours had the media just asked some asked some basic questions and let people speak, let people have a debate about it. So um, it's just hard. Well, at the event, we caught up with a few attendees who shared their thoughts, and we also touched base with dissenting Canadian virologist, immunologist, vaccinologist, Dr. Byron Bridal. One part of Dr. Ryan Cole's slides and his speech that he didn't quite get to was the inclusion of mRNA into the food species. And I know you've talked about that a little bit before. Um, can you brief can you us on what's happening there? Yeah, sure. So it's interesting. So he, he shares the very same concern that I have and actually linked to the very same paper. So that is, you know, recently there was a, a sister journal from the uh, Journal of the American Medical Association. So it's considered, you know, a very high impact uh, paper that publishes reliable science, right, that clearly shows that the mRNA from these mRNA COVID shots can get into breast milk and therefore be consumed by breastfeeding animals, which in itself is very concerning because there is no legal approval there for oral administration of these COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, so that's interesting, right? You wonder about legal implications there. But uh, and people argue that it's uh, low concentrations, to which I say, what is a safe concentration, right? You have to define and demonstrate what a safe concentration is, we have no idea. Plus, uh, some people have this misconception this mRNA is very um, susceptible to de degradation, very fragile. This is not natural mRNA that breaks down in seconds to minutes, right? This is modified mRNA that we're finding. And it can be found in the body for much, much longer than what we're told. It's quite robust. And further, remember the mRNA is just a genetic blueprint, so it can amplify the amount. You know, every person will individually amplify that small amount of messenger RNA into a larger amount of the spike protein. And so this is the concerning. So that was the observation. And what Dr. Ryan Cole and I both got concerned about at that moment, right? That's clear evidence of a way for this vaccine to exit the body. And so it's not much of a shift to see them as a possibility if you give mRNA vaccines to food producing animals that this could potentially get into the milk. So for example, if you give an mRNA shot to, uh, to dairy cows, based on what we saw with humans, there's no reason to believe that, that the, the target the pathogens get protein from the target. We could get into the cows and therefore we could be consuming these mRNA vaccines, the components or the derivatives of the target protein coded by the messenger RNA, could be consumed by people. And the other thing, of course, remember these injections go into the muscle, and we were told they stay in the muscle. We know they don't stay in the muscle, but certainly some people stay in the muscle. The muscle is the meat vaccines for these animals, right? And then we don't have any idea. I don't know whether it's, it's a concern or not. When you think about it, um, the other possibility is in poultry. You know, we don't know whether this is concentrated eggs. So what our concern is that there are legitimate scientific principles that would cause us to raise these legitimate questions about whether the potential for meat, milk, eggs, you know, and other potential food products to get contaminated with these cells. And so this is an area where we clearly need research, and we need this research done before we use these mRNA vaccines in our food producing animals. That was a wrap at the War on Medicine event. And if you agree that the trajectory of the COVID-19 response would have been vastly different had physicians like Dr. Corey, Lindley, and Cole not been slandered, silenced, smeared, then please consider signing our petition at stopmedicalsilencing.com. And there you can also chip in if you're able to, to support our independent journalism that allows for questioning and upholds freedom of expression. That's stopmedicalsilencing.com.